Would you Let's like a see lift? It. Yeah, please. How uh, you been? Good. That is the most random bus stop I've ever worked. <laughs> well, it's the country, darling. I know. <laughs> I do love the country, but just in small bursts. Really? Yeah. You're a town boy? Uh, completely. 100%. Like a bit of concrete? I do. The thing about in London as well, I suppose you can be much more anonymous, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. No one checks your shopping basket, do they, in the supermarkets? No, because that would be weird. I'm in my local supermarket. People know what I do for a living. And I have to hide all my naughty pot noodles underneath an organic chicken. You buy pot noodles? Go do some cooking. A little bit of chatting. Sounds good. And maybe a cup of tea, because you have had a very long bus journey. Or a, cu a cup of coffee. Cup do you do cappuccinos out of the country? No, no, you haven't heard about those. Are they nice? They are, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Get out. Massive amount. A pink sofa out in a garden with pink butterflies and hearts would be barking mad in any other person's home, but in yours it's normal. <laughs> I mean, were you rubbish at PE and so you couldn't do anything else? <laughs> was I rubbish at PE? I wasn't that good at PE. No, it was, I've always loved eating. My mum was a uh, housewife, so she used to be an amazing cook. And, you know, the biggest part of my day was coming home for the family meal. As a Japanese housewife, she got married when she was 19. Every day she'll be trying new recipes for my dad. And the only time that my brother and I used to complain about the food was when she used to cook chips because we thought she was being lazy. You didn't, did you say that to her? Are you being lazy, mother? <laughs> no, <it's laughs> what just, are you doing? We didn't want to eat chips because we just thought it was kind of fast food. I'm going to do uh, herb crusted lamb. Ooh. So it's the best end of lamb, which is from the kind of the ribs. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to do that with some peas and ball beans, some smoked bacon and a mint sauce. It's a classic combination of flavours. Oh well, no, you're going to start. Oh, am I? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so a bit of mint gonna... sauce. Okay, mint sauce. So, so a bit of mint. Yeah. Do you, you just obviously just want the leaves? Just the leaves, and then add some sugar, some salt, into a paste, white wine vinegar, and some... Olive oil. Olive oil. Am I doing a whole load of mint? We want to look really minty. Yeah, you know, fresh mint sauce. Yeah. It takes about five minutes to make. Then, because you make it fresh, you keep that vibrant green colour, rather than the ones you buy in the jars. Yeah. So I'm presuming you put the sugar in next to grind down... Exactly. To work down the mint leaves into a paste. And then what I'm doing here, yeah. so that's the best end of lamb and I've taken off the bone and I'm going to take the sinew off because I'm going to coat this in the parsley breadcrumbs. So your first year of life was in New York. Mm -hmm. Then yep. where did you go? Then I went to Japan. Right. Six years. Six years. And then when I was seven, I came over to Britain. Okay, so was it your father's work that made you travel all yeah. over the place? So what did your dad do then? A uh, chemical engineer. The great part is that he got a station in different countries. When did the time come when you thought actually I want to do cooking I don't want to follow in my dad's footsteps mm -hmm. and do chemical engineering your brother's an orthopod isn't he he's yep. an orthopedic surgeon so you didn't think you wanted to do that or did was there a choice there or was it always going to be cooking uh, to become a doctor there was no choice I didn't have <laughs> the brains to become a doctor you know my my brother is an academic yeah but for me I've always been more creative so I take after my mother and my brother takes after my father I was very worried because I didn't read your recipe, because obviously I've done all the prep for you. And, and I thought you wanted the bones attached. And if I'd known this, it would have been okay. Because yesterday, yeah. I was looking all forlorn in the supermarket on a Sunday, trying to find another piece of lamb with bones on, because I thought that wasn't right. Yeah, you, you kept texting me some random message about <laughs> bone in French trim. And I was like, well, it's on the recipe. It says no bone and the, no, just the meat. <laughs> Oh my God. Leave it to me. I'll do it. Just leave it to me. I did the night. I, did. I just texted and said, just leave it. I'll, I'll do it when I get there. Just shut up, woman. That's going to take a while, isn't it? I think, do you know what I might do? No, no, I think I've got an idea. What, what are you going to do? I'm going to cut it with my scissors to start with. Oh, okay. Well, you worry about the lamb. I'll, okay. just, I'll fiddle around. The first thing I ever wanted to be when I was eight was a film critic. So That's a great way to make a living. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Why don't you do that? It's a lot easier. <laughs> Well, the thing is, as soon as I, I told my dad this, yeah. and my dad it was always, well, both my parents have always supported me in mm. everything I do. He said, from now on, every movie that you watch, I want a critique on it. 
lasted one movie. Oh, he's and after ever. that, I was like, <laughs> no, maybe not. That's a good bit of psychology yeah. he used on you there. Parsley breadcrumbs, really simple, flat yeah. parsley. And then you've dried out some yeah, bread for me. Is that all right? Yeah, perfect. It's a good way to use kind of stale bits of bread. It is, yeah. And then in here, you just put loads of parsley. Don't worry too much about the stalk. And then I'm going to blitz it up with the dry bread. And it's important that you keep it nice and whole because as it breaks, it kind of bruises the parsley and then uh, all the green comes out. Oh, OK. So the actual, so the bread gets a lovely green, takes on a wonderful bright green. Exactly. Oh. So rather than, if you were to just add breadcrumbs to mm. that, you will have sort of breadcrumbs with green flecks. But if you do it this way, you'll get bright green. Bright green. What happened was I went to a college to study hotel management. Not much cooking going on in that course. No, only one there. day a week. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the only one that I turned up to. So literally I was there, it was a three year course. And then after the first year I got kicked out for lack of attendance. It was really funny, towards the end of the year, I started to feel really guilty because I hadn't been to any of the lectures. So I started turning up and one of the lecturers thought I was a new student. <laughs> And it's just towards the end of the year. You're making that look, it was supposed to be a really simple recipe. And now everyone's going to be watching this thinking, that's too much I'm not much doing trouble. it, I'm just not doing it. That's what they're going to be thinking. What's this? Let's this, just buy it in a these, jar. These. Clays of garlic goes in. See, but what I want to show them is that even an imbecile could <laughs> do this recipe. <laughs> what are you doing? Even a totally imbecile could do this recipe. <laughs> this isn't the way to do it. It is a really simple recipe, normally. <laughs> yeah. I always do that. And so I just thought, well, cooking's always been something that I've enjoyed, mm -hmm. and it was the only thing that I turned up to. Yeah, why not? Let's be, become a chef. And so I asked my dad uh, his advice on all the best restaurants in London because he'd eaten in, in every single one. And then I just wrote a letter to four restaurants saying, slight white lie. I said I was a student mm -hmm. looking for uh, work experience. And then um, I, I needed one year's work experience. You know, I said I worked for free. My parents were still in London at the time. So I was living with them. One of the restaurants replied, which is Le Gavroche. Oh, OK. And it was pure luck. You know, at that time, there was a two-year waiting list to work there. And I had an interview, and they said, yeah, fine. <laughs> Have a quick look. That looks fab. So, oh, you that's can a see. Beautiful color, isn't yeah, it? it's amazing color. And the great thing about this, you can make a big batch of it, put it in a container and freeze it, and that way you're going to keep the color. Of course, and then you can just whack it out any time you want to. Exactly. Would that be quite nice as something else apart from lamb? Yeah, uh, mix it with some soft butter, and then you can put it underneath the skin of a chicken. Or you could add the butter, roll it out, mm. because in the fridge it's going to firm up, yeah. and then put it on a piece of cod, a white fish, yes. and just bake it in the oven. And again, you could actually freeze it in the butter as well, couldn't exactly. you? Exactly. First day was the Gavroche, and then um, I went in there with my um, the chef whites I got from college, which is completely not what you should wear. So I walked into this kitchen, I had a white trilby hat on, a white lab coat. This is what they give you in college. That's right, they do. White trousers, white clogs with a little neckerchief. Honestly, they say ignorance is bliss because if someone like that walked into my kitchen now, they wouldn't survive five no. minutes. And I nicked my mum's um, knives and I just walked into Le Gavroche. Into Le Gavroche. That's the, fantastic. I know. The first job that I ever got to do was Julien Three Celeriac. Right. I still remember. Did you have any knife skills? Because only one day in a hotel and catering management course, I mean, did it show you enough knife skills to be able to julienne a, a celeriac or were you a bit... No, I learned really quickly. You learned really quickly. Yeah. You so, have to, you learn on the job really, really quickly. Yeah, I mean, if, if you don't learn on the job, you just don't last. And what's lovely is the roughly chopped mint. That is Very nice. roughly chopped. Mm. Very good. Yeah, it does. It could a bit more, take, a bit more sugar, a bit more salt. Oh, well, uh, look how it's over here. That is lovely, isn't it? I love that. I love the smell yeah. of it. The smell of it is. Um, and then, what I'm yeah. going to do is stick these breadcrumbs onto the lamb using egg white. Egg 
whites, egg whites, as did he said. So it does definitely need those because I suppose that cooks, it's the protein, it makes them stick and it's exactly. yeah, lovely jumping. And it doesn't have, egg white doesn't have flavour because you don't want to taste no. of eggy lamb. So you use the white, which doesn't taste of egg. Uh, you don't like egg. I'm not a big egg fan, no, I know. Like a snack for kids in Japan is raw egg, yeah. soya sauce, mix it in a bowl of rice, put well in it and you pour it into okay. the warm yeah. rice. That would be very good and highly nutritious, but it would make me throw up. <laughs> I grew up on that. <laughs> Everyone knew that you work in a certain kind of style of restaurant, you're going to take a lot of grief. The hours that we used to work was ridiculous and the pressure we're under to perform and produce amazing food was intense and it was a you know sacrifice that we were willing to pay but you don't transfer that over to the kitchens that you now head up do you no completely yeah. the opposite yeah. you know i did 10 years of training in super hard kitchens and you know some of the you know the environment it's not the nicest atmosphere to work in although the food's amazing and the experience you get is invaluable yeah. but i always knew that when i get to choose the kind of work environment when I'm the boss. I don't want to go into work in an environment where people are afraid to, to go into work. It's completely different now. Kitchens are changing. There's so many more restaurants that people can pick and choose to work. You can't run a kitchen like that and expect people to still work for you. But, you know, you look at the kids nowadays coming into the kitchen and you just give them a little bit, push them just a little bit and they just crack. And you know, sometimes you think, ah, oh, the good old days, yeah. you know? <laughs> yes, when they could really take the pressure. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, to cook the lamb, because you've got this wonderful, vibrant green crust, the last thing yeah. you want to do is put it in a searing hot pan because mm. it's just going to go brown, yeah. right? Yeah. So, the best way to cook this is on a gentle heat. So, okay. touch of oil, like that, and to tell when it's the perfect temperature, add a little bit of... Butter. There's nothing without flowers on no, it. No, absolutely not. There's not a white plate in the building. Okay, so you add the butter to there. Yeah, as soon as the butter melts, yeah. that's the perfect temperature. Oh, okay, yeah. so that's the indication. Yeah, so just just a little bit of butter. Don't need a lot. You know, my, my flat is the complete opposite <laughs> to this. Seriously, it's as far removed from this as possible. You're classically trained in French cooking, aren't you? Yeah. So the influences of Japanese cooking, does that sort of enter anywhere along the food chain? It doesn't because I don't like fusion food. Okay. But what it does is Japanese food is a lot lighter than classic French food. So I prefer uh, cuisine from the south of France, more olive oil, um, more Mediterranean influences and a lot less carbs. So that goes straight in. Right. Because it's such a gentle heat, it's not going to colour up the crust. Yeah. Leave that for 30 seconds and that will stick the crust underneath. So it'll cook the egg. Exactly. Okay. And then I'm going to flip it over and put it in, in a slow oven, mm -hmm. which is about 160 degrees. Perfect. It takes about five minutes. Is that all? Oh, yeah, five, six minutes. Nice pinkiness to it. Once that's done... Yeah. Then I'm going to do the peas and the ball beans. God, that looks so good. I can't wait to try that. I will be allowed to try that, won't yeah, I? Yeah, of course. You're not just going to give it to the people behind the cameras. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, just for the, it's just for the food porn shots. Just for, <gasps> You cook because you're passionate about cooking. Yeah. You know, TV is something that, it comes your way because you love what you do and you're good at what you do. So, what is next? Uh, the peas, smoked bacon and the broad beans. If you just want to shell the peas. Shell the peas? You're being no. funny. No, but in the restaurant, when I used to be at Pearl, I yeah. used to... This Seriously? Is how, yeah. You'd have to take off that So you bit. blanch it, and then you do this. <gasps> and then with this, we used to dry it, and then you blend it up and make a powder. It's pointless. You see, this is see, the kind of stuff... You look up, <laughs> and then your life has just gone by. Four years of doing that to peas. So your new place is going to be much more relaxed. You're no, not going to be doing it's going to be like... peas in the pod. Has there ever been... A kitchen mishap that's driven you to tears? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I cry over food. Yeah, no, not you've, never, you've never done it. <laughs> Mishaps happen all the time, but do I cry over it? No. no. Bacon going in. Yeah. Now, what did you ask me for? 
I asked for morels, mm. which is like the king of spring mushrooms. And what did I then say to you? Then you said, can't get morels. And I said, how about giraffes? And then you said, can't get giraffes. <laughs> so I said, just give me some bacon. There you go. <laughs> because that's the countryside for you. <laughs> <laughs> if all else fails, bacon, bacon is the answer. Right, so do you need a utensil? Uh, yeah. What would you like? Something without flowers on it. You went from the Gavroche to where? To Shenike, which was uh, owned by Nicola Denny, mm -hmm. uh, three Michelin stars, and I was there for a couple of years. And then from there, um, I went to a place called The Capital, which is an English guy called Philip Britton, uh, another Michelin star restaurant. From there, I went to Les Serveurs, which is another one star, and then went to work for Marco Pierre White. Oh, how we... was that? Interesting. Yeah, it's a pretty brutal place, you know, and it was all about the food. Nothing else mattered. Mm. It's just everything had to be absolutely perfect. Make sure it gets a little bit golden brown and crispy. Mm. Then I'm going to add the peas, which yeah. are raw. Add those and then right at the end, the ball beans. Oh, and Ooh. wild garlic. Oh, no, that's outside. Yeah. Do you want to go? I'm doing it? the bacon. No, I'm not going out because it's raining it's and raining. Hand, my hair's looking good. Off you go. I'll watch the bacon. <laughs> what a host. Okay. I remember this. This is, you know, uh, 1996 I was there. I was a sous chef on the larder and then one dish, his signature dish was a ballotine of salmon and then there was 10 chive sticks on each one. But we only use two centimetres from the very tip. So not the rest of it, just the very tip. We used to measure it. And then it used to be three pieces of caviar on each half um, piece what? of longest. Three tiny, tiny. Yeah. And then we used to do, you know, a perfect slice of salmon and, you know, everything was so precise. It was kind of almost, uh, it was obsessive, mm. you know? And Did you ever want to just misplace something just to see if you noticed? <clears throat> God, no. <laughs> no it, way. Are you scared? Were you scared of him, genuinely? Everyone was. Really? Yeah. Mate, got some wild garlic. Lovely. Do you use a lot of this? I do, the... yeah. I would it's use amazing. it all the time. Tell me what your guilty pleasure is. Something you have to eat on your own behind closed doors. You might make a bit of a mess with it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest, before Marco Pierre White came along, chefs were respected, but more in a kind of conservative kind of way whereas Marco came along and he made it kind of rock and roll didn't he and from that point and now you know some chefs are, are kind of like superstars aren't they now mm. it was Marco who started the, the whole, that whole thing so the lamb's right. ready so okay just take the lamb out and look at that it hasn't <gasps> lost any of that vibrant green color and is it can I just yeah oh it's beautiful just I love the green rest. I love that green it's great isn't God, it? the colors are so fresh aren't they after working for Marco and Phil and going to work for Eric, with Eric, it's all about taste. And I love the way, you know, from because I'd worked with Marco for a while, you know, I was chive batons, everything perfectly placed. Yeah. And he would literally take it and he would say, don't need this. And he would literally oh, really? pick it apart and said, you know, what, what's this doing? He wants it more free to... form or? No, it's not that. He said, well, what's the point of putting something on there if it doesn't enhance the flavour of it? Oh, OK. His approach to it was all about the taste, and that is something which was invaluable to me. You know? Because food, ultimately, is just about taste. It is. It really you know? is. So right at the last minute, just add the garlic, and just take it straight off the heat, oh, and let it well in there. That's amazing. Amazing colours, isn't it? Oh, it's just beautiful. I can't wait to come to your restaurant. What are you going to call it? Uh, I haven't got a name yet. <gasps> No, I haven't got a name. I'm waiting to find a site. How about Jun's restaurant? What do you think? I don't know. Do you think? <laughs> I don't know. Having your name above the restaurant. Mm, I, don't oh, know. I think it's what you've got to do. Self-absorbed. Well, listen. Do you know what my cafe's called? Lottie's Kitchen. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> is it really? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Eric Chavo, so you were sous chef now. So the next stage was going to have to be head chef. Yep. So where did you go? Um, so I worked for Eric for a couple of years and then I took my first head chef job, mm. a small neighbourhood restaurant in Fulham uh, called Chives. We spent about £2,000 on just painting and just opened it up. Fantastic. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. Such a nice feeling, you know. 
I mean, the restaurant itself was really, really plain, but I could do whatever I wanted and cook my mm. food for the first time. And it was an incredible experience. And so did you think at that stage you developed your own style of food or do you think no. you still had the hangover from all the other chefs really and what you were bringing through? Definitely. Yeah. I think your style takes years to de develop and, you know, it's continually evolves. Mm. So, we've got the peas, the ball beans, smoked bacon and wild garlic. Yeah. Lovely and fresh. Oh, it just looks so lovely. Oh, mint sauce as well. And then with the lamb, this is the best part, mm. is when you slice it, you should have <gasps> edge to edge pinkness because you've put it not in a searing hot pan. You don't get that brown edge. It's almost been poached in yeah. a way, hasn't it? It's... Mm. Yeah. Lovely. That just looks fantastic. Should we do the other one? Yeah, go for it. Because otherwise I have no idea what you're having. One of the best reviews I got was from A.A. Gill. He came once and I just served him. And then he came the second time. And apparently he thought that the petty fours that I sent him the first time he came, I had cut the petty fours using a knife that I had recently cut garlic with. So um, he told the restaurant manager, the second time round, he said, could I have some of the chef's garlic petty fours? Be and being young, my first yeah. head chef job, a little bit cocky, yeah. I sent him up a little petty four tray with just garlic cloves on it. <laughs> could you imagine <laughs> doing something like that now? I yeah. wouldn't dare. No. And it's that kind of young, yeah. brash arrogance that you have. Yeah. Look at that. Lovely. Can I have a little bit of the sauce? Spoony? Oh, you can use that spoon now, because that one. Mm. 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 Is that just to shut me up? <laughs> <laughs> Loads of the mint sauce all around. I genuinely can't talk at the moment. <laughs> My girlfriend has an amazing palate. Does she? Yeah, just incredible, incredible palate. If she wanted to become a food critic, she could. So that's fantastic to have someone like that to be by your side, really. Yeah, you know, she so can be pretty harsh, though. Can she? Yeah, which is really? good. Which is good. It's so tender. It's so full of flavour. Mm. There's absolutely, there's not a bit of it that hasn't got a, an, an intensity yeah. and a deepness of flavour. I'm sorry about the fork. Um, there's a knife. I know they don't match, but... You know, the longer I cook, and I've been cooking for 23 years, you realise the best things are the simplest. Mm. It really I is. I totally agree with you. You know, I've eaten in some of the best restaurants in the world, yeah. and you'll go there, have 22 courses, and you know the ones that stick out tends to be the simpler, more classic flavours. That little bit of lamb I tried was amazing, so I'm now going to go in there and do the full force of the Jun lamb. Peas, bobbins, and bacon. Um, mm. That is so tender. Mm. But the saltiness for the bacon and the garlic really comes through gently and subtly, doesn't it? No, it really is. It's absolutely scrumptious. But that crust mm. makes such a massive difference to the flavour of the lamb. Mm. It gives a real depth of flavour, doesn't it? It's not overpowering, it just really complements the flavour of the lamb. It keeps it nice and fresh and yummy. Cheers. Cheers. It's been fun, it really has. It has been a good day, hasn't yeah. it? You're gonna drive me back to London now, right? Back to civilization. <laughs> <laughs> it's outrageous. Have a nice day though. Oh, it's been beautiful. Did you like my sofa? Yes, I did. You are joking, you're not dropping me off the bus stop. Yeah. What? That's why I picked you up. Yeah, it's but fine. the bus stops like every every three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to see you. Yeah, really good to see you. Take care, my sweet. See you soon. See you soon. I'm yeah. going to hitchhike. That's <laughs> what I'm going to do. Stick your thumb out. No, you've got your return ticket. You don't want to waste it. You know what? This is exactly why I live in London. Is it? <laughs> oh, Jun, you don't have hay fever, do you? No, I'm oh, good. I'll be all right then. Doodle pip. See ya.